We welcome you to another Bible study here at the park. We will be engaging in a study from the book of Psalms entitled God's Pandemic Praise or Pandemic Praise, God's Playbook in Perilous Times. We pray that you will be strengthened, you will be challenged, and that you will be encouraged in your walk with the Lord. Today is the day in which we need to rely on the guidance of the Word of God. And so we are here and we are grateful and pleased to be able to bring to you this study from the book of Psalms. Good evening and welcome to the Highland Park Wednesday night Bible study, located at 3700 Shanks Lane. The Reverend Byron L. Cox is our pastor. We want to thank you for tuning in tonight, and we don't take that lightly, because there's a lot of things that you could be doing, but we thank you for tuning in with us. Let us pray. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Never let us be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Will you bow down thine ear unto me? Deliver us speedily to be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save us. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, Will you lead us and guide us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are dealing with a series of some in the pandemic. And my assignment was Psalms 46. If I had to give it a title, I will call it All My Help Comes From the Lord. Psalms 46 was written in a time of crisis, much like what we are going through today. The theme of this psalm is the greatness of God and his power to deliver us from things that are far beyond our abilities and control. The writer of this psalm want us to understand that it doesn't matter what we are facing in life. God is greater. You see, a lot of times we magnify our problem, but we should be magnifying God, which is much greater than our problem. Psalm 46 expresses thanks and gratitude for the deliverance of Jerusalem, which is the city of God. My brothers, and sisters, this psalm has three key points for us to consider. Number one, God is a place of security when everything else fails. Verses one, two, three through three on Psalms. 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof.
verses 1 through 3. God is a place of security. Verse 1 through 3 tells us God is our refuge and strength, which means he is our shelter of protection. And he will protect us from all danger, seen and unseen. My brothers and sisters, God is not just present. He's very present, which means it's guaranteed he's always there. Early in the morning, he's there. In the middle of the day, he's there. Late in the midnight hour, he's there. And everywhere in between. God is always present. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. So why should we be afraid? Even if the whole world blows up and the mountains start to crumble, we should not be afraid because God is our refuge. And strength. Isaiah 40 31 tells us, But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not faint. That brings me to my second. Verses 4 through 7, and it reads, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. The heathens rage. The kingdom were moved. He uttered his, his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Verses 4 through 7 tells us the river and streams describes the comfort and control when God is in the middle, when God is the center of attention. And it demonstrates the holiness of God's temple and provides a dwelling place for the glory of God and assures victory over the curse. Isaiah 60, 14. These verses. Describe these verses as the worship of the nation at Jerusalem. Where the enemy will bow themselves down at the city of the Lord. Officers and governors will be at peace. Overseers and exactors will be righteousness. Her wall will be salvation and her gates will be praise. And the whole city will be filled with the brightness of the glory of the Lord. Psalm 48 is a good example of describing the glory of the city at Jerusalem which has been delivered by God. After the enemy were defeated, the people praised the Lord and thanked him for his kindness and his love. And his city will be established forever. 
My brothers and sisters, God can walk in the middle of a crowd and speak, peace, be still, and make our enemies surrender right before us. He will make our enemies our footstool. My brothers and sisters, the world's opposition is no match for God. God can speak and destroy the universe. His power is unlimited. God has unlimited power. His power is unmatchable. That brings me to my third and found point. Verses 8 through 11. And it reads, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he had made in the earth. He make it wash to cease until the end of the earth. He break it the bow and cut it the spear in asunder. He burn it the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob's is our refuge. Number three, all men are called to pay attention to God's work and submit to his authority. I said all men are called to pay attention to God's work and submit to his authority. Verses eight. Through 11 tells us to look at the awesomeness of God's work and power. He is the controller of the universe. Verse 10 is a direct command from God. It tells us to be still and know that I am God. He's telling us to stay calm. In other words, I, I got this. Stay calm and watch him work things out. He's asking us to put down our weapons and stand in awe of him and his unfailing power. God is sovereign. He can do what he wants to do where he wants to, when he wants to, and how he wants to do it. God is omnipotent, all-powerful. And when all nations see the power of God, they will honor and exalt him as the one true God. My brothers and sisters, we should stop fighting in our own strength and surrender to him who will help us fight our battle. Human strength cannot match supernatural strength. Psalm 121 tells us, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? All my help come from the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him 
and he will direct our paths. My brothers and sisters, I don't care if you are the president, the governor, or the mayor. I, I don't care if you live in a mansion or a three-room shack. I don't care if you drive a Cadillac or you're driving a hoopty. The Bible said there will come a time that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will come back. That Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't know what you're going through today, but whatever it is, you're not going through it alone. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. He's everywhere at the same time. He's in Mars, Venus, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and even Earth. He's everywhere at the same time. Psalms 46, verses 1 through 11. Thank you and may God bless you. We can.